So tonight is what's new at the library. It's our yearly October um, meeting. So we have Catherine Jones, direct, director of special collections. Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everyone in person um, and online. Welcome, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me online? Okay. Is it still sounding pretty good for you guys? Okay. Um, let me know if it's not. Um, so traditionally, we've talked about what's new in special collections, so we'll just kind of jump into that. Share screen. Okay. Minimize that, you guys. So, uh, as Chris introduced, I'm Catherine Coons. I'm the supervisor of the special collections department. I'm going to be celebrating my fourth year with the library. Uh, so, I'm really excited about that. And um, our collection has grown. We've provided, we're providing more access to it every day. So, it's all really great things. And we're doing more collaboration and partnerships and things like that. So I really am really fortunate to work in such a well-established library as well as one with such cool collections. So um, I'll just go from there. I'm just gonna move my keyboard so I can use the navigation tool. Okay, so visiting special collections has changed a lot over this last year. Um, so we were closed, we opened back up by a, a one hour appointments and then now we're fully open again. So um, we did, since our last meeting that it, we aired on YouTube, just cause we didn't have Zoom yet. And um, it was kind of the easiest way to get out the information. Um, we were closed shortly after that time in November and then Maine, the branch, this branch stayed closed until March. Because if you guys noticed upstairs, it looks a little bit different. We had a big renovation. So we tore down some walls, we opened some spaces up. Um, so that kind of caused us downstairs to also be closed. Um, but then we opened back up probably end of March. I couldn't remember the exact date, you guys. It's been quite a year. Um, but we answered questions virtually and by letters and by telephone. So any way that people can uh, try to connect with us, we tried to answer their questions. And we did not charge a fee just because we did restrict our access to our collection. So people couldn't come down and do their own research. Um, but we slowly transitioned to being open without any restrictions. Um, so now you can come down anytime that we're open. Um, and then, Oh, some really, really exciting news, you guys. So um, I've made my staff and my volunteers start recording who visits special collections or if we get phone calls or emails or things like that. And over um, September 13th through, through the 25th, we had over 80 interactions with people. So that means in person and uh, telephone. So that's really great. Um, and that's the highest number that we've had since we re reopened. Um, some other things that have changed are our hours. So um, you guys may remember that we've been open until 5.30. That's no longer the case. So we are still open Mondays, 9.30, or not 9.30, 9 to 8 p.m. And then Tuesday through Saturday, we're open 9 to 5. And then on that Saturday, we're closed over the lunch period. So from 12 to 1. But uh, those are our updates for those things. We're really excited to have people back into our space. Um, another thing that we've been doing since uh, over this past year is having displays and also having them at other locations. So um, the first couple sets of images on your screen um, are displays that we've done at Fairmount. So at our Fairmount branch, we've taken some collections over there and showcased those. We tried to re uh, restrict that to like books. Um, and then if they're more fragile items, just photocopies of them. So 
um, that they don't get any damage on them. Um, but we did one on, so this whole year we're celebrating the 175th anniversary of Iowa statehood. So in December, um, we're celebrating 175 years. And so kind of the whole year we've done like different topics on Iowa history. So the first one is kind of just a general timeline of Iowa history. And then the second, second one was on, um, we chose fun materials that were colorful because our summer reading thing was color, reading colors your world. And so we just chose like a fun rainbow themed um, collection exhibit. So we have a cyanotype on there and then a really pretty purple lithograph too. Um, but um, if you guys have visited us in the last month or so, we did have a traveling exhibit from Central Iowa Museum in Ames and it was um, toward a universal suffrage. It was on the African-American women in Iowa and their vote, the vote for all. So um, they put together this lovely exhibit that was really easy to put up. And it was just on fabric panels, text on both sides. And if you guys did miss it, you can check it out online. So you can just search this title and then um, it will come up so you can read more about that if you're interested. Um, but they just took it away on Friday because they needed it back. Um, but we have current displays too. So our current display at Fairmount is, um, oh, I'll get the, the right title. Iowa's Wild Places, How the Landscape, how the landscape Changed Our Heritage, or Shaped Our Heritage. So it's all about um, the landscape, ge geographical, um, nature of Iowa, plants, animals. So people get to see kind of fun text that we have in our collections down in special collections. Um, well, I'm really glad that the branch manager over there, she was always trying to find something to fill that space. And she asked me like, oh gosh, maybe end of 2019, 2020. And I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> and then we finally got to do it this year. So <laughs> it's been a long time coming, you guys. Um, but another really fun thing that's going around and circulating the library is the Iowa's People, Iowa's People and Places. So this is a pop-up exhibit from the State Historical Society. So institutions all across Iowa can request this for their library, their community, their museum. Um, and actually Davenport is very fortunate and we get two. Um, so the city of Davenport requested one and we did two. And the schedule for the cities is coming out um, shortly. But um, ours will be rotating between our different library branches and it's over at Fairmount right now. But it will be back at Maine in December. Um, so there's that, and that, um, this is actually really cool because they have a more permanent exhibit at, in Des Moines at the State Historical Society's Museum, but you can also view it virtually too. So if you guys don't want to go over to Des Moines or you just don't have enough time, you can also look at the more content online and they have tons of stuff going on for the Iowa 175th. Um, and so then we also, here at me, um, we have the hashtag one, Iowa 175 exhibit. So we have some materials that we um, put out for a, a big celebration in August, but we kind of moved it downstairs um, after that got over. And so um, you can go view those things over in special collections. So we, to get more information about that. So another big thing that happens in special collections is that we get new materials. And so new collections are always coming in through donation or through purchase. So I'll just be going over some stuff that we've gotten over this last year. So I just like this picture. <laughs> um, they're just tiny little black and white prints, um, but it was just kind of a fun, fun one. Um, so this is collection 2021-14. Um, this is, the title is just Regional History Collection because we don't, um, I think it was just donated us, donated to us by like a random donation. So we didn't know who it came from. Um, so we were unable to 
um, follow up with them. But, and that sometimes happens. Um, but so it dates from 1892 to 1993. And it's only seven photographic prints, but it's a really neat collection. Um, so it does have some postcards in it. So of those, those items, um, it does have ties to the dry park um, that was in, oh, I think in Clinton, I did some research. I, North yeah, yeah, North of yeah, North of LeClaire. And so um, they had picnics there. Um, this family took their boat down the Mississippi. Um, so it's, they're kind of an interesting set of folks. Um, but if you guys are interested in this collection, you can come and look at this in special collections. And it is online um, at uh, the description. <clears throat> so this one is 2021-06. This is the William V. Mulling collection. It dates from 1900 to 1971. It is a collection of personal papers and photographs and mementos. Um, so William is a gentleman who grew up in Davenport. He was born March 7th, 1922. Um, to Vern and Hazel Dickey Mullen. Um, he graduated from Smart Intermediate School in 1937 um, from Davenport High School in June of 1940. Um, he served in World War II in the military police. He died on May 3rd, 2003, and he's buried actually in Los Angeles, California. So he moved out there after his service in the war. Um, and his uh, death certificate actually states that he was an aerospace machinist for 35 years. So how we got this collection was a, a dear friend of his sent it to us because he, he had all this material and he saw the connection to Davenport and he reached out to us. Um, but you can see a certificate from his military. Um, he did do a stint in um, uh, modeling, so you get a glamour <laughs> shot of yeah. his. Um, and then some family photos too. So it's a really neat collection. There's also like a little um, uh, a dinner plate map of like the different theaters of the war. So it's really mm -hmm. cool. He must have taken it from one of the local places that he ate at. Um, so that's a pretty neat, it's a neat collection because it's a little bit of everything. Um, Is it also online? It should be on archive space, yeah. So all these collections, um, I'll talk more about archive space, but if you write down any of the title or the number, the accession number, so I'll explain the accession number a little bit. So that is the 2104 or whatever number after that. So the year is the year that it comes to us. So it's donated or purchased or whatever the case may be. So these, materials all came to us in 2021. And then the number after that is just the sequential order of how they came to us. So this one was the fourth one that we got. And the last one was the seventh, sixth. So yeah, so if you are searching um, that site, which I'll give you guys the link um, or tell you guys, um, you can just type in those things. So it's really easy. Um, this collection is uh, 2104. Um, it is a collection of late 19th and early 20th photographs um, from a variety of places. Um, they date from 1880 to 1915. Um, there's about 49 photographs in the collection from Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, and Germany. Um, so they came to us. We did um get some digital images as well um from this donor and so some studios that were featured are doms free hostetler berg uh, mangold wales and lens and then um, a number of different ones from outside of the area too um, so these are really an interesting kind of collection because we don't really know the names of most of them, um, but we do have their images. So if you guys recognize anyone as your ancestor, <laughs> please let us know. 
So this is one of my favorites. Um, this is just a little advertising postcard that we got. Um, so this collection is a little bit more unique. Um, so the 2018-18 is the collection development policy or collection development collection. So it's stuff that I purchased for the collection and then we just um, add it into here so we can keep track of where we get the information or where we got the item. And so this is a business card for Catherine. Um, I'm going to not say her last name because it's Um, I think it might be that. Um, but she was uh, like a dressmaker, a seamstress in Davenport. And so she came over from Germany. Um, and we were able to do a lot of great research on her too. Um, so we have this all in the, um, archive space or our archives and manuscripts catalog. So you can find out more information from here, but it's in German, um, it states where her store is. And so you can, um, and it's a cute little scene from the early part of the century. So this collection might be of interest to folks who have ties to Leclerc. So this is 20, 21, 16, this is, a collection of newsletters from the Suter family. Um, so they, um, one of the family members, she had a collection of all the newsletters and she donated them to us from the, the beginning one to the last one. So 1983 to 2007. And so Philip Suter, who is the patriarch of the family, he was a Mississippi River pilot who settled in Leclerc. So there's a number of houses associated with him in Leclerc too. So if you guys are interested in historic homes, you can go there and look at those homes. Um, he had three sons, grandsons, and um, a great son, grandson who also became river pilots. He was the first riverboat pilot in Leclerc and was trained by French Indian voyagers to navigate the dangerous rapids um, down the river from Leclerc. Um, so he moved to Leclerc in 1836 with his family after living in Ohio and Illinois. Um, but what's neat about these newsletters is that it contains information that the family members wrote up about the family, but also like when they uh, met for family reunions. And then also um, later on, they talked about some of the historic homes too. So um, it's a really neat collection. Then we have the 2021-09, some materials that we got from Patricia Scott. Um, so these are just some cards um, that she wrote, but we got a couple other things. So it's uh, six published volumes, one microfilm re reel, one pedigree, pedigree chart, and then research index cards that she wrote and used for her genealogy research and teaching. Um, her classes at the Davenport Public Library. So um, these date from 1901 to 2005. Um, so you can request those as well if you are interested. Then um, I got to actually meet with this donor. She was a really sweet lady, um, but she attended Marycrest College and she wanted to find a home for some of her materials. Um, so uh, this collection is 2021-18, the Medhouse Med, uh, Mary Crest College, College Collection. Um, so it dates from 1950 to 2020. Um, so she graduated from the class of 1953. So she and her sister actually attended Mary Crest. Um, and so she got, she, um, and she was a really big force in uh, scheduling reunions and things like that. So she has um, she's kept up with a lot of the ladies that she went to college with. So it's um, a really great collection. So if any of you guys have gone to Mary Chris, then you can look at it and uh, reminisce. Um, then we have the 2021-27 um, flat collection. So this, I believe it's just one item and it's just this one. So it's just a photograph of a uh, class from 1934 from Davenport High School. Um, but what's neat about this is that all the students are listed on the back. So we can actually identify the folks in the images. So 
that's really great. Um, so this is just one example of um, some school materials that we have in our collection. This one is a really neat collection that we have. Um, so this is 2021-15 Marion Bolt Edwards collection. So this dates from 1916 to 1991. Um, this collection is made up of images pertaining to Marion and her family um, and also Davenport and the Iowa's Oral Deaf School and the National Fraternity Society of the Deaf um, Division, uh, Davenport Division number 59. So she is, um, she attended this school and um, I believe her mom did too. Um, but both of this collection is made up of both original photographic prints, digital images, um, and they also, um, document people, awards, certificates, things like that also are found in the collection. Um, but she, she donated anything that was local to Davenport. So um, she did have some stuff related to the National Society. So she sent those materials there, but um, it's a really interesting collection. So you can see some uh, scenes from the classroom as well as some pictures from her family and stuff in it as well. Um, so this collection is an interesting one. So we, um, I think, I want to say this one come, came from one of our branches. Someone donated it out there. Um, but this is 202107, the Chairman's Club. It's a photographic collection, but with one newsletter, mm -hmm. I think. And so this dates from 1983 to 84. Um, so it's this group of people that, um, met and went on trips, essentially. So all the images that are in this collection are showcasing them going other places, but they're all from this area in Scott County. So um, oh. it's a pretty cute uh, collection. So you can see everybody <laughs> having fun. Then we have 2125, um, the Stanton Photograph Collection. So these are photographs. Uh, dating from 1900 to 1957. Um, they have particular connection to the Stanton family, particularly Juanita uh, McDonald Stanton. And so other family names that are included in this collection are Steuben, Crone, Botham, Davidson, and McDonald. Um, and so there is one image of a female ancestor from Austria um, they are all, they are professional studio prints, um, some real photographic postcards and a lot of snapshots. Um, a special interest is a snapshot of the Watcher um, School in Pleasant Valley. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry you guys. Um, the students who went there in May, 1931 on the last day of school. So they um, took a photograph of those folks um, class photograph of Juanita's ninth grade intermediate class with signatures on the back. Um, and then she also, um, the donation also came with a 1935 Blackhawks yearbook as well. Uh, most of them are unidentified. Um, and some have dates and some have nothing further. Um, but she actually, um, was born to James McDonald and Alma Stubin. McDonald in 1917, and she married Jess Stanton, and she passed away in 1973. So everything's a little mixture of family history and just local history. So we really like those types of collections. And then we have 2021-24. Um, this is the Logan collection. So most of the materials in this collection are um, photographic prints, but this one is really neat because um, this is a souvenir from the drum school in district, the district number nine um, school in Butler Township in Scott County. So um, it had a picture in the front and then a little like program in the center explaining some of the different stuff about the school. Um, and it lists the principal and then um, the students who attended 
So it's a really neat little item. Oh, I did not change that. Um, this is not this collection. This is a, um, a legal documents collection. I cannot remember the number, but um, it is just original um, documents of um, different proceedings. And I think they're both wills um, in Scott County. So disregard that number. I didn't change that. Um, so this one is 2021-22. This is the Pete Sisters scrapbook. Um, so this one is, they, this, these groups of sisters, um, they just uh, wanted to document the history of this area. Um, so they kind of started back in, uh, I think at the beginning, they did like 1894, and then they went to up to 1956. And so um, most of this stuff is about Rock Island, but um, it was an interesting combination of newspaper clippings and then also like school materials too that they pasted in. And then this collection, um, we got this one fairly recently. Um, this is 2021-23, the Klein collection. Um, so this, in this collection, um, there are personal documents of birth, marriage, grammar school diploma, naturalization certificate, and um, correspondence regarding said certificate. Um, and they're all pretty much regarding Franny, Fanny Goldstein Klein. Um, they date from 1883 to 1941. Um, Fanny was born in England to Polish parents, um, Jacob and Rachel Katz Goldstein. Um, the family immigrated to the United States in 1887. Um, Joseph or Jacob Klein was born in Minsk, um, Russia in 1882 to um, Abraham and Leah. And he immigrated in 1902. He was a peddler merchant dealing in secondhand iron for many years in Davenport. The couple actually married in Davenport in 1907 and had two daughters. Um, so this is, these are original um, certificates. And um, so the certificate of birth actually is Fanny's of when she was born in, in London. So it's, um, and then their marriage certificate and then her um, naturalization papers. So, um, so we're still accepting donations. So we'll have new ones throughout the end of the year. Um, but kind of what we do with the collection. So what we do when we get them. So if you guys decide to donate or have someone <clears throat> for someone to us, we'll have them fill out a deed of gift. So that's just tracking that ownership history saying, where we got it, where you guys got it, um, how it was collected, any pertinent information about that collection that we would want to share to future researchers. Um, we'll fill that out, we'll arrange and preserve the materials. So we'll rehouse them in archival um, products, um, <coughs> arrange them so that they're usable for researchers. And then um, through that, we'll create a description. And so they'll go up online and then be able to be researched by anyone who's interested. Um, and then providing that access. So having folks come in to look at them or scan the materials if they're not in the state. So you guys, besides just getting all those new collections, we've been doing programming. Um, so we've been doing in-person programming, Zoom, and YouTube programs. So one series that we've started since the beginning of this year is Opening the Box. And so this is just a program to highlight all things archives and manuscripts. And so um, we choose a topic or a collection and we go over it, um, show pictures of it, describe what's in them. Um, and so giving people more context to what we have in our collections and how to access them. And then we have preservation workshops. So opening the box is the first Friday of every month. Um, 
preservation workshops or a bi-monthly program. So every other month we do some sort of um, preservation technique and we can record it and post it onto YouTube. And so if you guys are interested, you can search YouTube for Davenport Public Library Preservation Workshop and they should pop up. And if you have any troubles, just contact us and we can, we can help you out. Um, but this one is, was for um, scrapbook preservation that image is from. Um, over the summer, right before the Bix race, um, our librarian, Katie Reinhardt, she did a really great um, program that was called Race Through Davenport's Past, the history and the history and architecture along the Bix Seven route. And so she looked at historic homes and the different history around the Bix Seven race. I think she chose just one section, but she had to split it up because she had so much content. So it was a double feature. Um, then we have the World War I lecture series. So this is a program series that we do with the Rock Island Arsenal um, Army Sustainment Command historian. So that those staff members come over and they present on um, different topics. So this year they um, went over World War I, but upcoming this year, this uh, upcoming year, we're going to be talking about local Rock Island history. So that one will be really neat. Um, and then we did main menus. So um, we had a special volunteer through SCIGS um, present um, with one of our staff members, Karen O'Connor. Um, they did a presentation early this year for just a video recording on YouTube. And then um, they've been teaching a class. So, um, and the last one is this Thursday. So it's really great. Um, but I think they'll be looking at doing other classes. So if you guys are interested, please keep an eye out. Um, and then if you also, if you want anything else, our main menu is a selection of different resources that's, that we have. So if you want us to talk about anything, they'd be willing to talk about. Um, then a very unique um, opportunity that I think came out of COVID um, is this third Thursday at the Hoover Presidential Library and Museum. So this is not a program that we really have anything to do with setting up or anything like that, but they have offered this to a number of different local area libraries where we have a unique link and have everybody in our area access it. Um, so it's really nice. And they have been recording their sessions. So they've had um, one on Laura Ingalls Wilder, um, oh gosh, um, Lou Hoover, Hoover himself. Um, they, we had like their, his grandchildren present on different aspects of Hoover history. So it's a really a neat um, selection of presentations. And so I don't know how long that will continue, but we'll participate as long as they are willing to do it for us. Um, and then another thing to celebrate Iowa, Iowa history this year is the Iowa Statehood Book, Statehood Book Club. So um, the State Historical Society has selected a, four different books um, over different quarters of this year. And so the next one is in December. And so um, they've been on a, a range of different topics. I think this last one is on agriculture in Iowa, um, but you can read it, discuss it with us. And then a week later, you can attend the state's uh, State Historical Society's program. And they have like a little like talk with the author, like a discussion as well with the book about the book. So it's kind of a prelude to that. Then we have our color art collections. So this is an annual thing that we do. So um, this is our fourth, fourth one that we did. Um, so this one is all about industry in Davenport. Um, so we chose a bunch of different scenes from around the area. So they could be images from our city directories from different materials like that. And we scan them into coloring books and then you can take them home. Um, we have print versions and then also um, 
downloadable versions of them as well. So you can give them to your grandkids or nieces and nephews or do them yourself. So they're just from our collection. And if you just search hashtag color our collections, you can see a massive library of coloring books from institutions as far flung as Oxford to the Huntington and Cal California. So they're all doing that and scanning their materials so you guys can color them. So I alluded to this earlier, earlier but um, we planned a big event in August. Um, it's called Hashtag Iowa 175 Celebration. So we had it on August 19th. Um, it was a, a celebration to um, celebrate Iowa's history, food, and culture. Um, so we had musicians, we had local businesses who sampled their food, we had different uh, posters around of Iowa history, and then we also set up a table upstairs with stuff from special collections. So it was a ticketed event. Um, and so we um, planned it around alternating currents, which is a big music fest in Davenport, where you can like walk around and listen to free music. Um, but we did it on the first night. So we had um, musicians from our QC Beats, um, which is a local curated music collection that you can listen to, stream or download if you want um, from, our, from their website. Um, then, so some upcoming programs, you guys. So we have another big one, um, which is the Quad Cities Archives Fair on October 30th. So this is going to be from, I believe, noon to three at the Butterworth Center. And so it's going to be a showcase of different institutions, historical and cultural from across the Quad Cities region. So I know that the uh, Center for Belgian culture is going to be there. So that's our first, that's the first time that they'll be celebrating this with us. Um, we have, well, we'll be there. Um, uh, the Swenson Swedish Immigration Center will be there, German American, um, just a whole bunch of different folks. And so you can come and see what they have to offer. Um, and then there'll be a couple different uh, presentations as well. Um, so it's not just going to be walking around to different booths, but um, I think Gretchen will also be opening up the tunnels underneath the Butterworth. Um, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that's true. I think it is, um, but it's really fun. Um, so you can just come and attend however long and you can check out what you're doing. Um, so some other upcoming programs. So we have genealogy tips, tricks, and treats. Um, if you guys are familiar, we have been doing genealogy nights um, for the longest time. Um, but since COVID's kind of happened, um, we've kind of decided to pair it back and have it only for a couple hours. But this is where you guys can come and use special collections. The only department, it's on a Sunday. Um, Sunday, October 24th, and so you'll come in the 4th Street door and have special collections all to yourself, and so um, it's a really fun time. You get to kind of talk with fellow genealogists, talk with staff, um, get access to the materials, so it's, it's a really fun, fun event. Um, what hours is that? One to four. And then um, you can sign up online. And then if you guys don't want to attend in person, I'm going to try out a virtual component and show you guys how to access um, Ancestry from home because it's going to be accessible until December 31st. Um, so if you guys don't feel comfortable coming in, that's, that's another option. And then we have um, another instance of our local history series. So we're going to be talking about the Davenport women. So the um, George Davenport's relatives. And so Gina Shantz, a local author, um, she'll be coming and presenting on that on November 16th. Um, then our very own Amy Driscoll, she's going to be talking about murder and madness, tales from local cemeteries. So she she's our resident ghost and expert. 
so she's going to be talking about that on October 20th. Um, so it should be really fun. I think it's, mm, I want to say, is that Fairmount or Eastern? Eastern, maybe. Um, I didn't plan it with her. Um, some of our folks from information services did. Um, but it's going to be in the evening. You can attend it virtually or in person. Um, and then we are also partnering with information services um, to bring you a local author. Um, he wrote Cowboy Courage, Westerns in the Portrayal of Bravery. Um, Bill, Bill Hantis, uh, he is a part of the Colonel Denham Courthouse. Um, so if you're familiar with that, um, he's going to come talk to us about that. I believe that's at Eastern. I should know because I've helped plan it, but it's now in the it newsletter. It is. It is. The Murder and Madness is going to be October 20th at 6 30 at Eastern. Eastern is right. Janet always has my back. Um, so, as I mentioned before, you guys, so if you have a Davenport Library card, Scott County card, or Bettendorf library card or any library card that has access to Ancestry, you should be able to get this from home um, until December 31st. So Ancestry is going to be accessible. Um, it's not in your typical location. So instead of going to the online resources, you want to go to our catalog and search Ancestry at home and then click on that link. Um, because it's not through the regular online resources. So there's a YouTube video, or if you have any troubles, just contact us and we can walk you through it. So some other fun things that have happened at the library and just some reminders. Um, so research, resources and searching techniques. So our catalog is one of our best resources for searching books and monographs and journals and things like that, but we're also starting to catalog our maps. So those will be found in there. Um, check back periodically as we're adding more all the time. Um, and we just kind of started doing that too. But one of the biggest things is our archives and manuscripts catalog. Um, I'll talk more on that on the next slide, I believe. Um, if you're interested in any photographs from the region, um, check out our Upper Mississippi Valley Image Archive. And so that is a really great resource. It has materials from our collection, but also Augustana, Musser, all over this area. So check it out. There's a lot of great stuff. Um, we also are still blogging along. So um, we have a really neat blog called Primary Selections from Special Collections. We post something every week. Um, it's tied to our collections. It's tied to neat newspaper articles that we find in the Davenport newspapers um, or just about our events and what's going on. So check those out. We, have, we do research and um, we love to share our history. Um, we have genealogical forms online. So instead of going to Ancestry or Family Search, you can use some stuff that's locally created. Um, and then we also are on social media. So if you guys do that, you can follow us there and find out more. So this is just a screenshot of our archives and manuscript catalog. And so this is, you'll also hear referred to archive space. Um, so you can just type in any search um, right in that search bar that's hidden by my box. And then you can press search. Um, it's, it's really hard to see. Oh, it's right there. I don't know if folks from home can see it, but um, it's right behind there. But if you want to go check this out, it's just archives.davenportlibrary.com. So essentially the library's website, but with an archives period in front. Um, it's really nice. Um, it should have all of our collections listed in there. They might be at different levels of description. So if there's not too much description to it, just send us an email and we can um, assist you with accessing those. Uh, then we have, these are our genealogical forms online. So this is just on our blog. So you can go to 
um, the home. There's color art collection. So if you want to color stuff, we have FAQs um, and then forms. So these are just right here and you can download those. Um, sadly, they're not where you can enter them online yet. We're trying to figure that out. Um, so you can type it in and do it all online, but we haven't haven't accomplished that one yet. But you can print them out and then type, write them in if you'd like. And then where is that page? So it's on the blog and it's under forms. And, and how do you get to the blog? It, I don't know the exact um, URL. Um, is there a link from the homepage of the Davenport Public Library? Yes. So if you go to the Davenport Public Library's page, davenportlibrary.com, and you go to, I think, genealogy and local history, the selection over there, you can get to the blog from there a couple different ways. So it should say like special collections blog. Okay. Good question, Koki. Okay. <laughs> And then we are on social media. So we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram. And then if you guys want to, um, you can actually go to our blog, which uh, it's blogs.davenportlibrary.com slash SC. That's our blog website. <laughs> but you can sign up for our e-newsletter on that same blog by just typing your name and your email address at the top. There's a little pop-up bar that comes up and you can sign up for our e-newsletter. It's going to be a quarterly one. Um, so our next one will be coming out in December or Jan December, January, and February. Um, and it features what we're doing with programs, new collections, featured collections, a genealogy joke, uh, some puzzles that we do with images from our collection and a whole, whole host of other stuff. So um, if you're interested in doing that, please sign up there. Um, and we don't, we try not to post anything more than the, the quarterly um, newsletter so you won't get bogged down unless there's something big events wise where we have to close or reopen. That's the only time when we do it outside of those normal times. But um, this is all my contact information. So my email, the department's email, uh, our phone numbers, our websites, but do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm.